All right, so this is about a specific kind of fallacy, that is to say, fallacy is a faulty reasoning, which are the cases of formal fallacies. To say that uh, we are talking about something formal or formal logic is to say that we are concerned with uh, validity. That is to say, take the following case. All men are mortal. Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. Now, here is a case where a very famous uh, syllogism is perfectly valid. To say that it is valid is to say that I must not concern myself with the content of what the sentences say, what it means, man, Socrates, being mortal, etc. But just focus on the structure of the reasoning. To say that this um, syllogism is valid is to say that the conclusion is logically entailed by the premises. How do I know this? Well, to say this, to go a little bit further, depends actually on something called the principle of non-contradiction, which we don't have time to talk about, unfortunately. The point is this. You cannot affirm the premises, all men are mortal, Socrates is man, and deny the conclusion simultaneously without creating a contradiction. Right. To accept the premises and to deny the conclusion would yield. So this is what we are talking about when we talk about validity. And again, this is a formal property of reasoning. By this, I mean the following. Consider the following case. All cups are green. Socrates is a cup. Therefore, Socrates is green. Now, that may sound silly, but in fact, this is exactly the same logical structure as the previous case, and we have to say that this is equally valid. All P are Q, S is a P, therefore S is Q. What about an invalid reasoning? Well, consider this one. All men are mortal. Socrates is mortal. Therefore, Socrates is a man. Now, the problem with this one is the following. On the one hand, if you look at the sentences, you can think that they, the, the claims, you can think that they are indeed the case, that they are true. Yet, the reasoning itself remains invalid. Why? Because the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises. Because if I accept the premises, all men are mortal and Socrates is mortal, it doesn't follow that Socrates is a here is, however, a deduction that is perfectly valid. All animals live on Mars. All humans are animals. Therefore, all humans live on Mars. Now, you're going to say, well, this is not a sound inference because we all know that there are no animals or humans on Mars, that all the animals and humans that we know of live on Earth. But even though it's not a sound inference, it still remains valid. You can imagine a universe in which all animals live on Mars and all humans happen to be animals. The, if those two premises are granted, if you accept those two premises, then you cannot simultaneously deny the conclusion all humans live on Mars without creating a contradiction. So, when we talk about validity, we just look at the form of the reasoning. When we say that an argument is sound, we mean that it is a valid argument, formally speaking, and that it also uses true premises. This one, of course, all animals live on Mars, all humans are animals, therefore all humans live on Mars, is valid, but the premises are not true. That's why it's not Now, let's look at two structures of invalid um, inferences, uh, formal fallacies. The first one is called affirming the consequent. A little bit of vocabulary, first of all. Something like, if P then Q is called an inference, right? It's the movement that goes from claiming one claim to the other. In an inference, the first term, usually represented by the letter P, it's called the antecedent, if P, that's what comes before the antecedent. Q is the consequent. Now, the fallacy of affirming the consequent 
text the following structure if p then q and q okay this second premises is when i affirm the consequence so if p then q and q the and q affirms the consequence therefore p now this argument is invalid invalid again means that the conclusion can be false even when the premises are true here the fallacy is that the, the problem in uh, affirming the consequent q is that i do not take into account other possibilities for q beside p let's take some example if it rains the street will be wet the street is wet therefore it rained or if i have the flu then i have a sore throat and i have a sore throat therefore i have the flu as you can see the antecedent the consequence sorry the consequence in both cases is going to be the street is wet in the first case i have a sore throat in the second case right now q so in our case the consequent uh, could very well be the consequent of another antecedent right the street is wet because r s or t I have a sore throat because R, S, or T, not necessarily just because I have the flu or it rains. Remember, we're talking of validity. Again, it's a formal property. Let's just say the conclusion could very well be true, but the point is that it doesn't follow from the premises. The street could be wet because the water line broke, or you can have a sore throat because of many other reasons. Uh, it's probably one of the most common symptoms. Second fallacy, fallacy of the undistributed middle. Let me start with some vocabulary first. First of all, distributed. Okay, we say that a term of a proposition is distributed when it applies to the entire class that the term denotes. Okay, take the following proposition. All men are mortal. Well, all men, the first term, is distributed. By this, we mean that we are talking about all members of the class. What is going to be said about, uh, in, in the proposition, applies to everyone who is part of the class humanity, right? But Morto is not distributed. Uh, we are not concerned with all the members of the class designated by the predicate being mortal. We are only talking of a certain set of mortal things, namely men. We are leaving a lot a ton of other mortal things, animals, plants, and so on. What about the middle, since this is called the fallacy of the undistributed middle? The middle term is the term that appears in both the premises, both premises, but doesn't show up in the conclusion. For instance, if I say all x is y, and z is y, or all z's are y, Therefore, Z is Y, or all Z's are Y. Now, what is the middle term? Well, look at the premises. The term that appears in both premises is the term Y. And on top of it, in this case, the term Y is not distributed. Let's take some example. All students carry backpacks. My grandfather carries a backpack, therefore, my grandfather is a student. Some mammals are cows. All humans are mammals, so some humans are cows. Now, look at the middle term. In the first case, the class of people carrying backpack. In the second case, mammals, right? The term that is common to both premises. Not that Y, so in our case, the class of those who carry backpack or the class of mammals, is the middle term is common to both. And that in both examples, the middle term is not distributed. We're not talking about all the people who are carrying backpack and we are not talking about all mammals. So it may or may not be the case that all X is Y. It could very well be the case that all students carry backpacks. You could imagine a universe in which all humans do carry backpack, but this is not relevant. This is 